It happens every two years, a showcase for the latest military and security equipment from around the world. But how much longer will it be held here in the British capital? DSEI 2019 has been preceded by a week of protests in London's Docklands district by peace groups and environmental campaigners. And now the mayor of London's added his voice to the concerns. Sadiq Khan wrote to the organisers saying... London is a global city which is home to individuals who have fled conflict and suffered as a consequence of arms and weapons like those exhibited at DSEI. In order to represent Londoners interests, I will take any opportunity available to prevent this event from taking place at the Royal Docks in future years. His comments have been welcomed by campaigners who point out many of the weapons deals done here involve countries on Britain's watch list for human rights abuses. According to data collated by a campaign against the arms trade, between 2008 and 2017, Britain did military arms deals worth around $48 billion. And almost a third of that was with countries which figure on the government's own human rights priority list. Those countries include Israel, China and Saudi Arabia. Al Jazeera put those concerns to the UK's Defence Procurement Minister, while she launched an initiative to employ more women in the defence industry. So the British government has one of the most robust uh, arms licensing systems in the world uh, and we will continue that and anyone who ever has concerns should absolutely bring them to government and we would be absolutely uh, vital that we look into them immediately. We, we are absolutely determined to make sure that this industry uh, is looking after the defence of uh, citizens across the globe and helping support uh, in peacetime operations. Britain has suspended licenses for arms exports to Saudi Arabia after campaigners who based their case on atrocities in Yemen scored a victory at the Court of Appeal. The UK is appealing against that ruling. But rights group Amnesty says another problem is how individual arms manufacturers check their products are not being used in potential war crimes or human rights violations. They asked 22 firms, including major manufacturers like the US company Raytheon and Britain's BAE Systems, what they were doing. Only eight responded to Amnesty's request. None could clearly say what they were doing in terms of so-called due diligence. Ultimately, um, what they were describing were measures that they take to jump through the hoops to get export licences. And we're very clear that that is not sufficient in terms of human rights, international human rights standards. Even if they were permitted to transfer weapons to countries like Saudi Arabia, they should be independently uh, not transferring those weapons because of the human rights risk. In reality, the arms fair is unlikely to disappear from the events calendar in the near future, but neither is the controversy that surrounds it. Nadine Barber, Al Jazeera, London.